This is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And this week we're going to talk about how to digitize an embroidery design from some Asian characters like this. And this was actually a question that was sent in for our um, support desk. And um, we just decided it would be easier if we could maybe create a little recording to show everybody um, kind of how to do this. And so um, the customer sent us a JPEG image that we could work from. And so I'm going to go ahead and pop over onto my workspace and I've already opened up the design. And so you can see on my screen that um, I opened up the image and essentially this is like the background or a backdrop. So um, what I mean by that is notice in the right hand side that there are no artwork shapes. And um, if I zoom in over top of the picture, um, you know, really closely, you can see right away that this is a JPEG image that's got sort of black and white pixels. And so obviously somebody has to digitize this bitmap into artwork and then it could be converted into thread. And so that could be us, right? We could take our pencil and we could use one of our different drawing modes. And essentially we would have to sort of like zoom in over top of the picture and then click with our mouse and sort of move our mouse around the design and click, click, click to create the shape. Now, if you hold down your control key, it'll help make your lines more smooth. Um, although I will say when you zoom in to 600%, um, you know, things that uh, look a little bit sort of not really super smooth in real life. They're so small, you wouldn't notice that anyhow. Um, but the point is, I can trace this, you know, and if I trace this, then I can select it. Notice that there's now a shape and I can come over here and click on like auto satin to fill it in with thread. So you can see that we've created kind of like one piece of our design. Um, that's manual digitizing when you make it yourself. Um, of course, we always want to go and, you know, see if the automation can do it for us. And so that's where you go to like the wizard hat. And when you click on the wizard hat, there are different wizards. Um, you know, there's the cross stitch wizard as there's the original photo stitch wizard, which was, you know, replaced by the new photo to stitches tool, but the original one is still there. Um, also our, um, auto artwork wizard is here. And then you have auto digitizing and auto digitizing advanced. Um, I don't think I need the advanced. Um, it gives kind of additional options that, uh, sometimes are helpful, but here it's pretty straightforward black and white image. So, um, it, wouldn't matter is what I'm saying. You could use either one. Um, so I'll click on the basic uh, auto digitizing. And the first step is, you know, to choose the image that you want to auto digitize. Um, I saved the image onto my desktop. And so if I just look on my desktop to find it and select it and say open. And then um, that is now the image that's been kind of like selected. And so you say next. And basically this is a window that you kind of go through step by step and you, um, you know, approve the parameters and say next. So if you wanted to adjust the size, you could do that now. Otherwise you say next. And now it shows you the colors and you know that there's probably more than just one shade of black in there and gray, but um, the software has understood and kind of simplified it into just black and white. Um, otherwise you could uh, work in here to add more colors. And then, then I say next. So now we're sort of shown what it's gonna look like and you have a bit of a tolerance slider that you can sort of move to less um, or more. And if you click update, it'll kind of update the results. And um, in this image, I don't know that it matters any, but in some graphics, you will find that moving the slider back and forth helps to pick up details that are being missing. Now, um, also in this step, there's a indication right here that white has been selected as the background color and it's not going to fill in the color white with thread. Um, if you actually wanted the white filled in, then you could check this checkbox and it would fill that color in with thread. And if you wanted it to be the black was the background or like, you know, the voided area and the white was filled in, you could actually use your eye dopper and um, pick that color black. And now black would be the color that doesn't get 
uh, filled in with thread. And so that's kind of interesting. We'll go back to white. So I just click on that dauber and click on the color white. And so then I can say next. And it's one last set of questions here. It's basically what do you want to do about lock stitches and trims? I'll just set it to always lock and always trim and say finish. And so basically the software goes to work and it traces all of your artwork and it assigns the thread. And so it doesn't take long to auto digitize and, and this isn't wrong to do it this way. However, um, sometimes we want a little bit more definition in our design. And so um, I just want to pull this aside so that you can kind of look and see how it did. And we'll just study one of these characters. Now, this is the hard part about this um, because this isn't my uh, language and I don't know what this character says. And I don't know if it matters how it's created. And what I mean by that is I see this character as like something that maybe was done with a um, a calligraphy style pen that would be you know thick here and then as you put less pressure it got thinner and so they would be drawn is what I'm saying and when they drew them did it matter whether this one went first and that one went second um, because in our embroidery design that's not really represented Maybe black's kind of a hard color to see the details. Why don't I select this and just make it orange? Um, here, it's been created as an outline and one parallel stitch direction fills the entire character. But um, sometimes we like to use different stitch directions to create the dimension of our embroidery design. And um, so to do that you would need to use a different style of embroidery. See, the software chose a fill, right? That's the purple star at the bottom. You know, when I select it, it's a standard fill. And these are the properties of a standard fill. And if I use my shape tool, it would allow me to change the direction. That yellow line is known as the inclination line. And I could change it to be any inclination I wanted to. Um, it has to be on any two points on the outline of the shape. And so you can kind of move those two points to set them where you want to. And if I right click, it will update all the thread. But the point here is I would like to have more than one stitch direction. And so to accomplish that, I need to use a different tool. And the tool that the auto digitizing chose was the standard fill. But I want to use a satin fill. And the difference here is not the type of stitch, whether it's a satin or a parallel fill. It's the, the fact that when I use these sort of blue tool group, I can assign more than one stitch direction. So I'll choose the, there's sort of like on one end, there's satin. And on the other end, there's the auto satin. So if I click on auto satin, the software will convert it into a satin and the software will decide how to sort of put the stitch directions. So it's very quick and again, pretty good. But there's a couple spots in here where I'm really unsure if I like the way it went down. Um, and so now it's my opportunity to kind of like take control of that. Um, and to take control of it, you would need to use the shape tool. So really when you select something, you can easily resize it or recolor it. But if you want to work with its angles and its shapes, you'd click on the shape tool. And once I turn on the shape tool, you'll notice that there's now lots of those little yellow lines and I can move them to be anywhere that I want to. I can also right click over top of them and delete them, you know, if you don't need one. Um, so there's a lot of inclinations that could be edited. There's also orange lines and the orange lines are known as divide lines. And so notice right here, there's an orange line can you see it? If I click and hold, notice when my cursor goes right over that area, it shows an orange point. And if I move it just a bit, it shows a blue point. And if I move it uh, again, it turns into another kind of symbol and then nothing. So that symbol says you can curve your line if you want to click and drag. Um, and I can hit undo to put it back to right where it was. If the symbol says the blue circle, then I can click to move the point. And I'll um, put it down and hit undo to put it back. And then if it's 
orange, if my cursor is orange, it means I can move the divide line. And if it turns yellow, it means I can move an inclination. Actually, it doesn't turn yellow, does it? It just kind of turns. So now it turns into like a black node. So apparently the yellow inclination line has a black tip at the end of it. So the black tips are for moving inclinations. Blue tips are for moving actual points or nodes. And orange is for your dividing lines. And notice if I right click now that... Um, it may change entirely because now it's dividing here and it's got this angle to meet and it has that angle to meet. And so the software has turned. It'll always change from one angle to the next. So by changing the pink or the orange line and right clicking, I'm telling the software where I want my shape divided. So this is really the key to being able to, you know, sort of make these characters stitch exactly how we want them to. And so to make that easier, I sometimes just like to work on a piece of paper. So I literally printed off the, the sheet. And um, I'm not sure how well this will show on my camera here, but um, right down at the bottom... Can you see where I drew pencil lines on top of that? Not very well, hey. Um, I used like a um, kind of like a silver pencil to draw on top of the black. Um, it's harder to see. I can my eyes can pick it up better than the camera can. Uh, but the point is, and I'll go back onto the screen. Um, how does the stitching go? You know, and you could use your artwork. In other words, I can take the pencil here and choose a bright color like yellow or white. And I could sort of use that to say, okay, I think I want this to go like across there so that this stroke is sort of like defined. And then this one here, um, you know, and this is where I'm, the, if I was, um, I'm not sure if this is Chinese or if it's, you know, some other language, but the point here is um, I don't, I may be making choices that aren't the best ones. But can you see what I'm sort of doing? I'm sort of trying to help myself visualize how does this go? Because over here, it just looks like a bit of a mess. And I can fix it if I know how. So all I have to do is select it, use the shape tool, and here's that orange divide line. Well, I don't want it to divide. I would like it to divide there. That's how I had kind of imagined it. And if I right click, that fixes that up. But then here, I don't want this one to divide across here. I actually had it going down this way. And so that means there's another one that's right here. And so now I kind of have the two of them at the same spot. And my red exit point was there. So I'll just get that out of the way. Um, the one thing I'll say about that, sometimes there's like a node like this had this red exit point was right on top of that orange node. If you don't want to move it, um, notice up here in the floating toolbar, the little symbols, this one says show inclinations. And if I click on it, it'll hide all the yellow inclinations. See, there was one right here and there was one right there. If I turn them back on, so it's a show hide. This one is show hide split lines. So you don't have to see the splits. And this one is show hide entry and exit. So when I click on that, the little red dot goes away. And if I turn on it again, the little red dot comes back. So the point is, if the red dot's in your way, you don't have to move it. You can just hide it for a minute. And that'll allow you to find the orange dot more easily. And then you can relocate the orange dot. And so now I've made my orange dot go in a totally different way. And so, um, oh, something didn't go right because my orange dot has gone way the heck down there. How did you? Oh, my goodness. I don't even know how I did that. But where are you? There. So where is the orange dot? So I'll hide the inclinations so that all that's left is the orange dot. I don't know how I got it down there. I did not see me. I'll have to watch this video again to see how that happened. I'm going to put it here, which is where I wanted, and right click. Yeah, so that's what I was trying to do. And can you see how I've totally changed the way that the over and the under of the stitching goes? That little gap there says to me, I might need to play with my stitch inclinations. Maybe I need to add another one in just to make sure where are they? Let's see that turn on the inclination. So here's the one thing that's kind of funny about inclinations. You can't add them along an orange line. 
They can only be on the pink area, but if I just move that one a, smite, a small bit, look, it cleaned it right up, you know? So I just ch took the last one and changed it. But what I'm saying is if I wanted to add a new one, um, I couldn't add it to come from here across to here because that's an orange divide line. And I don't really want to add one from this pink line down to here because that kind of changes the angle. And I'm happy with that angle. So um, all I did was I found the last one along the line and I just sort of changed it just a smidge to see if I could get rid of where there was a funny, you know, just something about that shape. I guess the other thing you could do is you could come in and play with the actual points and see if you couldn't figure out if that maybe moving a point would clean it up. But um, if not, like I showed, really um, the more that you can unlearn uh, how to use um, the different styles of embroidery and then how to take control of them, it makes this design quite easy to digitize and create the embroidery. And so um, uh, that's what I needed to show you. And beyond that, it's really up to you to decide, you know, does this does this one go over top of that one or which way do they go? Um, so I hope that was interesting to you guys. The other question that the customer had asked was, did we have a digitizer that we recommended that could do all of this work for her? And while I'm sure there are thousands of Floriani people that could do that, um, I really don't have... Uh, any specific company or person that I would recommend. Maybe you could ask around at your local sewing store if anybody locally does that. Um, if you want to buy things professionally, like from an, a, you know, a company that is on the internet, the one recommendation I would make there is about formats. I think a lot of times people buy their embroidery designs in a stitch format that matches their machine. So if they've got a brother or a baby lock, they order the design in you know the PES format. Um, I just want to point out that when you say open, that under the formats that we can open, one of the options in here is special for commercial embroidery. And it's called, um, and I'm just looking for it. I'm sorry, I'm squinting because it's they're small. Uh, it's, where is it? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, right here, Pulse Embroidery File, PXF. So if you're looking for a professional digitizer and you can find somebody that offers or that can provide the design in this format, um, it's really excellent because then um, it's an outline style format. And so really what that means is it gives you much, much more control and ability to edit the design later. It's the difference between buying stitches and buying the outlines. And so just know that um, you can always write in if you want more to understand that again. But what I said was, if you're searching for a professional digitizer, ask them if they can provide the Pulse PXF format because your Floriani software can open PXF. And then when you save it as a WAF, you'll have all of the original artwork shapes that the digitizer made for you. So all that said, um, this design was easy to auto digitize. Um, the only thing was that the auto digitizer made it sort of a parallel flat fill. And um, I know that with characters like this, that a lot of times they look more dimensional if we can use different stitch directions. And so that was my suggestion was that we could um, use the satin fill and then learn to change that sort of inclinations and the split lines. So I hope today's video was interesting. And until next week, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and bye for now.